praise him. He deserves no more. Come on. He deserves it. Sometimes I ask people to worship. I said, please worship with me. And people look at me like, Finding the praise, something that you're feeling about him and yeah. saying it to him. Yeah. Sometimes I'm feeling so good that I just want to say, Hallelujah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's not just a word coming off the top of my tongue, it's just something from my heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sometimes I feel this time. I just go, holy, holy. Told you tonight, I know who the football stars are, who the baseball stars are. They come on, they think we were crazy maniacs. Come on. I was at one of your churches and we was having an outing that day. And all the girls come and they just had on all the football shirts and all into it. So dear God, they get more involved in the football than they do you. Come on. Come on. Let me tell you, he means more to me than the throw of years. He means more to me than the throw of years. Come on here now. If you can holler from the top of your voice for a carnal football game, you can holler for Jesus Christ. You need to come back to the altar and pray for me. So who is Greg Atkins? Uh, many people would say evangelist. People would say preacher. Some would say pastor, but I have come to realize that he is more than just those things. To me, he's been a friend. I, I know him before uh, I ever got saved. He was Scott kid, you know, which is my uh, cousin. Him and Brother Greg was good friends, and I know Brother Greg from back then, and he's always been awesome. He's always been a ever since then when we was younger he I can remember him preaching I went to a, somewhere to a camp where they was at camp and I, I remember getting up going out running to the car because he was him and Scott they was preaching and they scared me he's been there for me he's been there for my family if we had to call him when I, some of our family members was in jail we've had to call him and he would come it didn't matter what time it was it, that we had to call on him him he was always there for us and I know that he'll always be there for us. Saturday night, I didn't feel at home. Come on now, don't fall out with me. Amen, I really didn't. I was behind my pastor saying, come on, pastor. But I really didn't feel at home Saturday night. I don't understand that. It could be that my burden's right here right now. Even that I felt more at home Sunday here than I did at my home church Saturday night. Come on now, help me while I preach. But when I pulled out early Sunday morning, even the Holy Ghost come on me, I began to write a letter to my mom, even in my family. I wept like a whoop young. That's a road that wrote that letter. Amen. And I don't remember what all I wrote, but I said, Mama, I'm sorry. But if it seems like the last three years of my ministry that I've been neglectful to my home family, come on now. I come home Saturday morning somewhere around 3 o'clock. Amen. And I was having to be on the phone about the whole day. Amen. Talking to folks who were in trouble. Amen. And about all day long. Come on here tonight. Are you quiet? Hallelujah. Amen. Are you helping me tonight? Amen. Amen. And I left there and had to go preach Sunday. Saturday night. I said, that's all you do is study church, church, church. Church. Well, it's my life. Come on now. Amen. I've given myself. Amen. To the house of the Lord. 
Lord. And I'm telling you, I'd rather be here preaching in the gospel on this witch tonight than anywhere that I know. Whenever I lived in sin, even in sin, I always liked gospel music. Always did. And one of my favorite groups was always the Crab Family. One of my favorite songs was always, Please Come Down to Me. <clears throat> and I never went to church the whole time I was backslid. I never went to church, wouldn't even step in the church for 14 years because I knew what conviction was. Well, the night that I, I finally made up my mind that I was going to change, she wasn't even going to go to church that night. She was already in church, but she wasn't going to go that night because she was tired or something. And I said, if you go tonight, I'm going. And I'd already made up my mind in the house, God, if you deal with me, I'm going to get saved. Well, I went to church that night and uh, I, I made it all the way through the song service and I'm thinking, you know, I think I might make it out of this one. But then Greg and Jesse got up to sing and Greg said, uh, I got this song that's been on my heart all week. He said, I don't even know if I know all the words to it. He said, but I'm going to try to sing it tonight. And it was, please come down to me. And that's all it took. I was near about crawling to the altar. Tiffany got in trouble. She got locked up. It was on an Easter Sunday night, but he was there at the jail before I got there. I mean, he was right there waiting for me. And I, I just, that was, that was great. Cause I needed him and he was there. I mean, I didn't have to ask no questions. See, we're there. And that's just one of the times. Other times I've had to call him up in the night for myself, for him to, would he pray for me, you know? because I was sick and they would do it, him and Sister Jesse. It's just a lot of times I've had to, uh, he's helped me and my kids. Yeah, he's my friend. He's my friend. <laughs> yes, he is. And according to statistics, I should be one of these boys out of killing, in a stealing. Come on now, because I come from one a broken home. Come on now. According to statistics, I should be one of these causing all this trouble. But the only difference in me in this generation is I met a man one day. Hallelujah. I got more than secular preachers saying. I got more than religion. But I got a way down deep salvation. Hallelujah. I got something that I can feel. I church every Sunday morning by myself. Help me a while. I'm not here for pity either. Help me. I'll let you know, mamas and daddies. You're going to be held accountable. <coughs> that baby you hold, that little child you hold, your responsibility is more than putting food in there. Your responsibility is more than putting clothes on their back. Your responsibility is more than rocking them to sleep at night. Oh, glory. But you better instill in them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You better instill in them the power of God. Oh, man, I remember when he was a small boy coming up. Wanted to get in church and mom and daddy wouldn't do it in. So he was separated. That, he got, 
he wanted to go to church and mm -hmm. got saved. Right. He pastored on men's lives a long time. Yeah, before he'd been, so it seemed like he had a good move of God. He's a good old boy. He means a lot to me. Because he preaches God's word for one thing and his grandson day. We've always known he is a good boy. Yeah. Good pastor. He's a good pastor too. Yeah. I've enjoyed hearing him preach a lot of times. He's traveled through this country. Yeah. Preach the gospel. Yeah. Everywhere. Oh, yeah, he's touched it. The Lord by him. Yeah. A lot of souls has been saved under him. God bless. Is it me or do you feel the binding? Do you feel the binding that I feel? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel it? Yeah. Is it me? Come on. pastor of Refuge Church and Jesse's husband, he somehow found time to become Alicia's dad too. And um, that I could never repay him for that. I could never repay Sister Jesse for sharing him. And a lot of people don't realize that she shares him voluntarily. She doesn't have to. She could solo up and say, no, that's my husband and I demand for having family time and this is the way it's going to be, but she's not that way because her heart is his heart and her heart is for people's lives to be changed. And I'm thankful that even though they were in some of the formative years of their marriage, she still will selflessly share her husband, not only with the church, not only with her own children, but she shared it with me and I'm forever grateful for that. That's not a quality you see in every pastor's wife. Sometimes you see a hard-working pastor's wife who plans the events and cooks the dinners, and that's what a lot of people view a pastor's wife as. But one of the greatest qualities in a pastor's wife is selflessly giving their husband to the world. A lot of times we talk about dedicating our kids back to God. Sister Jessie dedicated her husband back to God. She prayed him in, God gave him to her, and she gave him back to God. And she shared him with this church, with people, with the world, across seas, across states. She shared him, and I'm thankful that she did.